Hey everyone, how are you doing? You have Mike and Phil here, and today we're at Eco Aquariums, and uh, Phil is going to give us a little bit of a guided tour of the shop. So you guys are in for quite the treat. Uh, let's start right here. So this is where we walk in our entrance. Yeah. So this is so if you were to come in, uh, we're open every Saturday to start from 12 to 5, um, just because we've just opened, and as as uh, more people know about it, then we're going to expand into the week. Um, but anyways, if you were to walk in come right in here um, and then right away what you're going to see is these custom made uh, aquaponics beta kits and uh, basically uh, I designed these things with a couple things in mind I got kind of tired of seeing those uh, beta bowls with just a little beta bowl yeah. you wanted something a little bit bigger and yeah exactly and they had that film growing on the top people kind of neglected them because mm -hmm. it was a pain to take the fish out and all these things so I put my uh, thoughts together and I put I got these uh, nice jars but with the faucets on them. But I also got this really nice pothos plant where I pop these holes in the top. Yeah. So you get this whole thing as a kit and um, it's cool because it comes with a metal stand and it looks really nice. Awesome. Uh, I, work, I also work at Hands and uh, I sell a lot of these for people in their offices. And uh, it's a really easy setup. You just sort of, you know, take out 50% a week, and then you're good to go. Yeah. So. And the pothos plant does a lot of the uh, the waste removal for you, yes. per se. So yeah, that's yeah, right. That's it, pretty neat. What it uh, it absorbs. Uh, it's kind of like a complete filtration. I still recommend water changes. Obviously, I, I uh, it's always good to put in some fresh water just to be safe and have a good maintenance schedule. But you're probably looking at maybe two minutes of maintenance uh, a week. And uh, I also, along with the package, you, I sell the uh, North Fin uh, Beta pellets and, um, and the instructions here on the back. And uh, you know, you get a good feeding schedule with them, don't want to feed them, and then you're good. Yeah. 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 And then down here we have uh, North Fin. Uh, I only sell North Fin along with, I get Nori in bulk. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but yeah, I sell. Uh, North Fin, I got the cichlid uh, formula, I've got the veggie uh, formula, I've got the veggie wafers, I got the community pellets, pro bowl, and then your beta pellets like we talked about before. Uh, I only like selling North Fin because to me it's uh, the best. My own High quality person. product, yeah. Yeah, it's it. What I like about it when I was talking to North Fin, uh, what's, what was his name again? Uh, Darius, probably. Darius. Uh, he was telling me that uh, they they use the least amount of grains as possible. They have to use grains. Um, it's kind of the binder. It's the binder. They have no choice in order to make a pellet. Um, but when they can find a formula where they put the least amount of grains, then that's something that I can uh, gravitate Possibly, towards. Yeah. yeah, and then I got my North Fin here, or it's not North Fin, uh, Nori rather, and I uh, chop this up and I get it in bulk and I feed this all to my African cichlids in the morning. Um, it's a lot of fiber, a lot of vegetable protein, keeps them regular, and then, you know, usually with cichlids, you run into a lot of gut issues, and usually that's because there's just some, something in the food that's you know, along with stressors and things like that. So we make the nori um, like this in order to keep them regular and it's obviously has a lot of nutrients in it as well. Yeah. So I'll uh, move over here. So yeah, so this is, uh, this tank is going to evolve eventually into a planted uh, aquarium display. Um, I just put it, set it up like this right now to keep a couple, I've got some Keeley fish in here and I've got some sparkling grammys. Um, but I just set it up for, for now to keep those, to house those fish. But it's going to be a really nice, uh, small planted aquarium uh, display. I've got a couple ideas in mind. Um, this is here to show you the ADA cube gardens that we sell. Um, the ADA tanks here, the reason why they're so special is because if you look at the side here, uh, you see how it's pretty much almost blue. Most tanks you'll we'll see, see yeah, you'll see, um, you'll see a lot of green and here you see mostly blue. And the reason you, it's like that is because they basically get the clearest glass they possibly can. Um, and then also if you go on the inside, uh, here on the corners, usually you see a little bit of silicone. Here you have absolutely no silicone at all. So this is probably one of the most high quality tanks you can ever possibly get. Um, and we sell these guys individually, but if you ever wanted an entire kit with the soil, if you want to make a planted aquarium, then uh, we'll work something out with that as well. Yep. So these are big, uh, these are really popular um, for people that are just starting out in the planted uh, hobby. So I guess something else to note here too is that you are an ADA retailer? Yeah, so in North Bay, um, 
in, in the Northeast region, we're the exclusive uh, retailer for uh, 88 uh, products. Um, and if you were to buy it here, you can only get it, uh, you can only get it in North Bay here. Uh, which is great because we built a good relationship with our distributor and uh, you know we're working hard at trying to bring this whole uh, planted aspect of things and also the science of having a very healthy planted aquarium which is all stuff that I've learned from my distributor and uh, something that I like to bring to North Bay as well. Yep. And if you also, if you haven't seen the uh, demonstration that was put on the Nature Aquarium Workshop, um, we'll put a link for that as well. And you were partly responsible for uh, for that workshop that we witnessed. Yeah, it was, and it was a good turnout. There was a lot of people there, and it was fun because it took, what it does is that it helps people take fish keeping to another level, yeah. um, where you're adding a complete ecosystem along with it being aesthetically pleasing because we're just designing it by nature. That was part of the workshop was just to sort of explain to people, uh, you know, how do you create a planted aquarium that's escaped really nicely and that looks like nature. Yeah. All nature aquariums, right? Yeah. So. So uh, do you want to start on the, with the first tank over here? Or? Yeah, we got uh, this tank, there's nothing really here. Let me shut the lights off here. Um, this tank, uh, so we're just slowly bringing in more fish, more and more fish. Uh, this tank here, we've just got a little bit of common stuff. We've got the powder blue dwarf Grammys. We've got a couple of uh, black bow snipes in here. Uh, we've got some yo-yo loaches in here. Um, just for a lot of people that are just starting off and they want to set it up, even for seasonal hobbyists as well, they're, they're kind of cool. So that's what we got in there. Here we got some uh, cobalt blue angels with some uh, gold robust zebra loaches. Uh, some more different kinds of loaches, a little bit of variety there. Uh, in this tank here, we've got some uh, red tail Otea loaches. They came in a real nice size. Um, we'll see how they do. A little bit more of an aggressive loach. Uh, so uh, they do well with other semi-aggressive uh, fish. Um, down here we're going to bring in some more. We've got some cardinal tetras and uh, with some uh, pepper quarries and some panda quarries. Uh, we've got some more quarries coming in on the way. Um, here we've got a nice, some nice size uh, rummy nose and some black bully loaches. We're bringing in some different uh, bully loaches as well. Um, here we've got the Honduran uh, red point cichlids. Cool cichlid, they don't get massive, they're kind of like you said Mike, uh, sort of like a convict uh, cichlid and then down there we've got a nice tight school of uh, royal minnows. Uh, you get them in a big school, they look really awesome because they're very tight schoolers and the males sort of flare their fins a little bit so they're kind of cool. Yeah, they do look really nice. Yeah. Um, over here is a bit of a pleco tank. Um, got a couple guppies in here as well, but we've got some ancestrous albino plecos. Oh, yeah. We've got some uh, clown plecos down there, and we've got uh, where's that? We got a flash pleco just over there, and this guy likes to hide under here. Oh, okay. It's, uh, gold yeah, he is. He's a, okay, I see him. Yeah, gold stripe pleco. Different kinds of plecos that you wouldn't commonly see uh, in other places, um, and they don't get massive, which uh, which is good. Um, so that's this section here. This is kind of going to be like, uh, for the most part, as I get things a little more settled, it's going to be more of like a community tank and all fish that do well in a planted aquarium uh, setting. It's sort of my plan for this section here. Um, and then we're going to get another tank down there eventually to bring in some more fish. So here is the star of the show for now. Uh, this is our 200 gallon uh, nature aquarium uh, display. So put this here for a couple reasons. Uh, to demonstrate that with the right uh, materials, with the right products, uh, you can create a really nice um, planted aquarium. And uh, you know, if you if you do come by the store, you'll see these plants are constantly making bubbles. Uh, we've got some uh, CO2 uh, being injected into the tank, yeah. and um, and uh, it's just a really nice, uh, really nice display. People, I'll try to get you guys uh, some better footage here. 
because the tank is actually really big. This how big is that again? Two hundred gallons. Two hundred gallons. One one ninety, yeah. two hundred, give or take. Get a subside angle. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, See the side angle, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you can really tell how big it is, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. It's 30 inches deep. And the thing with uh, nature aquariums, the best thing to do is uh, if you can go with more depth. That's usually better because it sort of uh, it helps with aquascaping more. Up top, we've got the Sunrise LEDs. Um, the substrate that we're using, which we'll get to in a little bit, is the Am uh, Amazonian uh, ADA substrate uh, with all kinds of different plants in here. Uh, and we've got the stainless steel lily pipes instead. You can get the glass ones, but I prefer the stainless steel. They're tougher um, and they don't break. They don't, cost, I, as they don't, they they don't cost as much. They don't cost as much. No, they don't cost as much. CO2 tank going up, and that's a 10 pounder. That'll last me. Last time I filled this up was December 5th, and we are now February. What's the date today? February. I don't know. February. Mid February. Mid -February. So <laughs> mid -February yeah. But this will last me a good six months. So they'll, and this is for a big tank as well. Yeah. Did you want to talk about the ADA uh, stuff yeah, I sure, have here? Sure. Okay. So. This is our small little ADA section. Uh, we have it more uh, stocked out into the, uh, the storage shed. Uh, but here what I did is that I just gave, so if customers come in and they go, well, why is this, why is this good? Why is this uh, some of the better stuff on the market? Well, this is all printed out for everybody to um, understand, to get some information on uh, on each product. So you got information about the power sand, which is quintessential. You've got information about the Amazonia. Uh, soil, which is uh, it explains um, the benefits of this soil rather than uh, other soils, and then it also I also have charts here to talk about um, the amount of power sand you need for the size of tank that you have, and I also have um, the amount of uh, I got a chart here showing the right amount of additives to put inside of your tank. So okay. when people come in, they go, okay, well I want to set up a 20 gallon tank. But, so, but I don't want to buy, I'm just going to use a couple of scoops, I don't want to buy all of them. So we sell um, each end of, we sell each element per scoop. Okay. So like if you need um, uh, clear supers, 20, uh, two scoops, or sorry, three scoops per 20 gallons, and so we'll just sell it in scoops so then you don't have to buy the whole yeah. thing. So that's uh, one part of it. We've got the Colorado sand, which is a really natural looking sand that has a bit of a reddish tone to it, and then it just looks, um, you saw some in the nature aquarium there. It just brings out that real natural feel. So if you don't want the whole thing that plants, you can have one section. If you're doing like an island design, then you can have the, uh, the Colorado sand wrapped all around here. Here's the different sizes of power sand that we have. This sheet explains the right one that you need for the setup that you're going with. And then we've got the uh, Amazonian uh, soil. Um, this all explains uh, everything in detail. And then we have the do aqua yeah, and the yeah, ADA stuff up there. Oh, uh, Mike. So we've got. So uh, when you come in, if you're like, okay, I wanna, I wanna plant an aquarium. Uh, I want an ADA setup. Well, we, what we do instead of just we just write you out a quote for absolutely everything that you need. Takes the thinking out of it. Um, but so you've got we've got your hard tubing for your CO2 tank. We've got the gray part set along with the clear part set to set up your. Uh, diffusers and uh, bubble counters we got we do have your bubble counters here that do aqua kinds that are not as expensive uh, we've got the uh, ADA uh, do aqua diffusers we've got the um, the uh, ADA the spring really washer <laughs> yeah this, these are the spring washer these like my pipes I keep them clean just because it looks nicer um, and that's what I use I use these washers they're really amazing okay uh, they to me I've they, they've been a blessing to be able to clean it out really nicely. We've got your aqu some of your aqu aquascaping tools. That you Lasers up there, yeah. Need and then this is just some thermometers. other stuff that you have. Yeah, just some thermometers and uh, some uh, algae cleaners there. Uh, now we're getting into uh, this section here. This part here is eventually going to be. I'm going to get tanks that are going to come up to this part. It's going to be filled with three rows of tanks. Okay. Smaller tanks, we're going to bring in all kinds of different species, interesting species that uh, you don't see commonly. And there's going to be a row of either 35 or 20 gallon tanks. And um, 
we're going to fill those up so we can bring in more fish. So that's the plans for this area here. This spot um, is eventually going to be uh, all there's going to be all plants that are all going to be put here. Uh, we're going to grow plants uh, hydroponically, so you know there'll be uh, we'll do some that are under the water, but then we'll also have uh, bring plants in with tissue culture. Okay. And and we're going to be growing them out uh, that way, and then just selling them in, in little pots that way. Then if people don't want snails or something like that, then you don't have to worry about. Snails have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, up here we have a little dwarf Grammy tank. We got some hung soli uh, growing up in there. We've got some Episto Mega Orange and some German Blue Rams that are just starting to get bigger. They're hiding in the back there a little bit. Love the dwarf cichlids. Anytime I see any different species uh, that I can get my hands on, I try to get my hands on. Yeah. Um, I like them too. So. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're cool. Yeah, yeah I will, this tank here actually, if we don't, uh, we're going to be doing, uh, we passed by this one, but my plan here is I've got it semi scaped. I'm going to get in another showpiece of tire wood. Uh, that's another thing. We bring in all kinds of different cool woods. All the woods that you see uh, in the tanks are all for sale, but this is tiger wood. I'm going to bring in a showpiece, and this is, is going to be a dwarf cichlid show tank. Oh, very cool. Uh, yeah, so I want to be able to do something kind of like what you did, Mike, where I like to get some cherry shrimp in there breeding. Yeah. And then, you know, they'll, they'll sort of be like a little ecosystem. Yeah. And I designed it with in mind with to enrich their habitat. And that's something that you'll kind of get when, we, when you come here is that um, it's not just about the fish. It's not just about the plants. It's about the whole scape itself. And then how to enrich the habitat so the fish live in a very natural environment and it brings out the personalities that we enjoy and that we like to watch. So because it's going to be a dwarf cichlid tank, I kept in mind, like I made all as many caves as I possibly can. There's caves lodged way back there. So then if there's a less dominant fish, then he can go away high and get a little bit yeah. of security. And uh, there'll be a lot of plants growing out of here. Uh, my plan is to get some plants growing out of the top. Uh, with a new product that uh, I'm just sort of messing around with right now. They're like little glass boxes and you plant plants in there and then they grow out of the top. Oh, which is okay. Cool. Yeah, okay. I, I, I just got a hold of a about. company uh, with that. And it's good for cichlids too. If you ever want to do a cichlid tank, you can get plants growing out of your cichlid tank um, and they won't get to them. Uh, we got some old, some nice Odessa barbs. Those are very nice. Yeah, I got them from a local uh, breeder. Oh, and, really? Eh? Uh, yeah, he bred them in his pond or whatever, his pond with his kid. and. He brought them through here, so they they're really nice size, and they're they're kind of like your they're not as aggressive as your tiger barb. You can keep them with other uh, less aggressive fish. You just you just have to worry about them. So feeding. these ones here get huge, like the no, they don't no, no they don't get massive. They um, they get a decent size, but they the one thing you know if you're keeping them, they're just it's cool to watch them eat because they go nuts. Uh, but you just have to make sure if you have other fish in the tank, they're getting food as well, so they don't, yeah. Yeah, they don't out-compete them. But all these tanks are like, like I said, we're just starting out here, and we have lots of room to bring in some to more stuff. And yeah, and, and third of those, here's a little bit more of a common, common type stuff. Some healthy uh, sword tails, which, uh, yes, they're common, but, you know, there's a reason why they're common, I guess, because they're a cool-looking fish. Yeah. Uh, and then we got some flame tail garamis, or sorry, some... Uh, some red flame grommies and some more powder blue uh, grommies that are going to go in the other tank, in the other dwarf grommie tank. They all have beautiful coloration though. Yeah, right? yeah, this, you kind of walk into this room and then you see that, that pop of color. Uh, here we have uh, some uh, crebenzis. Crebenzis, These yeah, guys, okay. I had some crebenzis in the other tank. That uh, These are the, these are the bosses here. And oh, they're the, yeah, okay. that I had to separate the other ones, but these guys can all sort of defend themselves and. Um, they were picking on the other guys, but these ones are really nice. This female is just showing off like crazy, beautiful. Uh, I just even the males they don't have as much color, but I still love the powder. This the overall shape of them, and I still I just love the powderation, the, pa the on their the pattern on yeah, their well, yeah. hands and everything. The, the spots, that really beautiful, cool. eh? Yeah, yeah. Here we just have um, some loaches some growing loaches. up a little bit. Yeah, some clown loaches. And one big one in there. This I just, uh, we're going to be bringing, this part here is all going to be cichlids eventually, but we have um, uh, these little blue dolphins. I'm just growing them out right now so they're a decent size so when I, they can defend themselves when they go over there. And we got a cherry spot uh, trophyus back there, but he's a little shy right now. So here we have a mixture of stuff. Now, I know people are probably going to give me flack for mixing Tanzanians with, with, uh, with Malawis. I know that's fine. 
Um, but I always look at things, things are not possible till you make them possible. Uh, these guys have been in this tank for a month or so now and uh, they're all doing fine. I've got Brichardis in there, I've got different Mambunas, I've got Dulutochromis uh, who has you know different diets but I still blend it so um, they all work together. And then I've got different species of Trophius. In here I got the Black Pemba Trophius. These guys came in at a good size. I've got the Firecracker uh, in there. So I have some nice color coming in. And there, so I, I just like how there's just a, a splash of different shapes and sizes and colors. Mm -hmm. And it's just really interesting to watch that, especially during feeding time. It's awesome. Um, so, role is have extremely good water conditions with a fantastic diet that works for everybody and you can get away with it. You can, you can mix them and I, the proof is in the pudding, I've done it and uh, everything's been okay. Some people will only keep peacocks with peacocks and, um, and mumbunas with mumbunas but we like to try things a little bit differently here uh, and try to try new things to uh, push boundaries and uh, show people what they can do. Here's another tank, a mixture of whatever. Some OB Mambunas in here, um, and just sort of uh, some Masobos. And we have a nice uh, Hop Ali in the back there, and he's doing just fine, even though he's with a bunch of uh, Mambunas. One of the things that we do to curb the aggression is we feed, when you feed them Nori, there's big pieces in there, and it's hard to swallow all of it at once. So it sort of muzzles the aggressive guys. And then it, uh, you know, it allows the less dominant ones to still get food. Still get a bite to eat, yeah. Exactly. And then evening, I still have a bit of a different formula where I put in three algae wafers in this tank, let's say, and then I put in all the dominant ones will go after the algae wafers, and then I'll put in some pellets along with it so the less dominant ones can get the pellets. Yeah. So it works out where everybody's getting uh, everybody's getting food and nobody's dying off. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll re like. One, we'll be bringing in lots of different uh, species of uh, cichlids as well. Uh, down here we have two tanks that are still waiting to get going. And, and then on the bottom we just got the Powder Blue Grammy because he was being a jerk and he was hurting everybody. We've got one um, rope fish in there but he's uh, more to come. These tanks here on the bottom are going to be a lot of geophagus and a lot of South American stuff. Oh. Um, I didn't even see this tank behind me. Yeah, this tank <laughs> here is uh, just a bunch of show male peacocks and haps. Yeah. Uh, we've got a new supplier for these guys, so we'll be bringing in lots of different beautiful fish. All males, um, you know, I know that people might like to buy the smaller ones because they're cheaper, but it's kind of hard to, you know, have a nice tank of males with a couple ugly the females in yeah. there personally but uh, you know if we if you want the smaller stuff we can bring it into yeah um, that tanks uh, ready to be filled in the bottom this section here is going to be a hundred and forty hundred and fifty gallon African cichlid show tank yeah so very young store yeah like I said uh, you, you've only just started this up I think what three weeks ago three now weeks ago. it opened yeah so. and we're just like our focus is and we're still learning as we're going right we're yeah. making mistakes we're learning from those mistakes but our main focus here is to uh, bring in the plants. Uh, we really want to bring in the planted aquarium thing. We really want to teach people about aquascaping. Uh, we really want to bring in nice, healthy, strong fish. We want to make sure that when they do come in, they're uh, kept by themselves and uh, we won't sell you a fish that's weak. Um, and uh, we'll only sell you fish that's strong. We believe in quality. We do our water changes in all these tanks. and. Um, we want to bring in some really nice Africans as well because, you know, I've always had a soft yeah. spot for Africans. So, but it's all just a growing process, uh, and then we'll be bringing in some more dry goods uh, along with everything else. But uh, yeah, I'm excited that uh, Mike, you're able to come here and film us on the uh, the birth of all of this. Yeah. yeah. No, I was happy to come in. Um, for those guys who haven't known, um, I've been actually coming to the store now for probably about what four, or five months since you first yeah, started getting the uh, some tanks filled and checking it out. And, yeah, and really focusing on on this other tank. We can go check it out again. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Hundred percent. Yeah, this tank here was uh, was something that I, I really enjoyed the process of coming in and actually seeing it when it was first started. Um, and uh, actually, actually, I think at the time you, you still had it uh, dry started, right? Yeah. So what we did when we when we started it was uh, we got all the plants put in and uh, we just put some saran wrap on the top and then we put some lights in there uh, on top and then we just got the plants to get their roots going. We do, we always do a dry grow with our new tanks 
uh, it's just easier. Um, the plants get the CO2 from the atmosphere and uh, then they're able to get rooted. So when you go and you fill up the tank, you're not getting a bunch of floaters. You can do it right away and fill it up. You're mm -hmm. just gonna, every so often, you're gonna come and you're gonna get plants floating around the tank. But this way, I just do it that way. Um, and then it works out a little better. And then when you fill up, when you uh, fill it up, you let it sit for about a month before you put any fish in there. Um, just to let uh, the bacteria start to, you know, yeah. multiply and to make sure that it's safe for the fish. Uh, because the nutrients, uh, there's so much nutrients in the soil and you want the plants to settle in as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was a lot of work at first, but now it's probably the easiest tank that I take care of out of everything in the store. Mm -hmm. um, basically, scrape a little tiny bit of algae that grows on here, but not much grows in there uh, because the plants absorb most of it, most of the nutrients, so not a lot of algae has a chance to grow. and. Uh, it's probably my most enjoyable tank. It's yeah. What I, it's where I eat my lunch in front of. I, I, I believe it. Yeah. yeah. This is my TV. <laughs> this is my new TV. Yeah. I don't need a regular TV anymore. But uh, you know, and then after maybe five or six years or so, we might strip this whole tank down and do a completely Start again, escape. Yeah. 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 And that you know we'll be doing escape out of that small tank over there as well, and then we'll have another display on the other side. But. Uh, We'll be bringing in all kinds of stuff. If you guys are interested in a planted aquarium, um, then we're just gonna hold your hand through the whole process. It seems complicated at first, but it's really, really easy. And it's probably the most rewarding um, kind of tank you can set up, in my opinion. You know, I know there's some reefers out there that are really into the corals and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Which is good, I'm sure it's rewarding as well to see the corals grow, but just, I like to watch plants grow. Yeah. You know, that's just as boring as it sounds. It's actually kind of entertaining. It's very interesting, and you know, it's, and and the oxygen that they make. I love when kids come in here and they see these bubbles coming out of these plants, because uh, it's fun to educate them to say, you know, when you go outside, this is happening. They're creating oxygen. You just don't see it. Can't see it yet. But here, you get to see it because it happens in the water as well, and then it supplies the fish with oxygen, and the fish are supplying the plants with. Yeah. with nutrients so and uh, we are going to be bringing in <clears throat> next month and placing an order with um, uh, to get some Thrive in. okay uh, yeah. yeah I'll be bringing in some Thrive uh, for some dosing because uh, I just ran out of my last little bit and then we'll be bringing it in to sell with them but um, that's uh, that's most of what I have to say about this tank I'm sure there's more yeah. and I'll think about it after but <laughs> you know yeah all right, that's awesome. Well, I uh, I really do like to thank you very much for uh, for bringing me in and, t and taking a look at all this tank and showing it with the sharing it with my subscribers. I should say, um, I appreciate that, man. So yeah, anytime, thank you very Mike. much. Anytime. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a growing process, and the more support we get, then the more we're going to bring in. Yeah. And the better the hobby is going to be in North Bay. Uh, we may get online at some point in the future, but right now we just want to keep it focused on the community. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be fun. I'm having fun. Uh, with it yeah. and I'm meeting lots of fun people so uh, we'll see how it goes and we'll make it grow we'll make it happen yeah all right awesome okay